How's it going everyone? Fast Force here. I wanted to start off today's video by thanking you all for 700 subscribers. I couldn't have gotten here without you all and I want you to know I appreciate every single one of you. Anyway, let's get into today's video. Today's video is a demonstration and in-depth look into the RTX trailer lobby recreation by Fred Milk, loading into the area. You can see that for starters it looks a lot like it did during the RTX trailer. Looking down at the floor you can see that it's reflective and shiny just as it was in the trailer. Heading into the main lobby here you can even see that they went through the effort of removing all the hiding spots that became necessary for gameplay reasons. To give the player a place to hide from the bots. Heading up the stairs here you will notice that not only have the elevators been replaced by these wonderful rolling doors that seamlessly transitioned into the main atrium. They've also changed the area around here to match the distance from the removed elevators. Heading back inside you can also notice that the photo booths are gone. This is again because, back when the trailer was made, hiding probably wasn't a developed mechanic yet. Down here you can see that the little baby carriages have also been removed. And coming down here you can see he removed the Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex logo from the wall. Looking up here on the wall you can see that they also reverted back to the early build of the Fastpad logo. You can see it better once we go up there later on. One of the changes that I'm most pleased with is in the gift shop. Here not only is the area a lot cleaner and open, but you can look up and see that the ceiling is missing just as it's supposed to be in the base game. For whatever reason they forgot to remove that area of the ceiling when they were making it. So when you were upstairs you would be able to see down into the gift shop. But when you were down in the gift shop you couldn't see up into the second floor. Behind the counter here you'll see that he also added the unlighting to the back of the counter. Heading up here you can have a good look at the upper section of the gift shop. Again, shiny floors. And over there in the corner you can see the area we discussed earlier. Heading back going across the lobby over toward the fax pad. We can see that they even added the door over here that takes us to the fast aid as it would have in the early build of the game. However you need a level 10 security pass. But using our debug menu we can turn off collision and toggle flying mode and check what's behind here. Unfortunately you can see there's nothing back here but let's continue on with the mod. Continuing on we can head into the fast pad, where things have more or less stayed the same. Aside from the fact that they changed the sign up here to be the logo and not the menu itself. Heading deeper behind into the kitchen area you can see that virtually almost nothing has changed back here. Everything is pretty much the way it was in the base game. Aside from the fact that there is no hiding spot. Heading downstairs to lost and found. We can see that nothing has changed inside. even in the front area. Heading out into a customer service we can see that they did change the locker areas. Widening them a very little bit. And also adding a level 10 security door. Again however, toggling our flying mode to look inside we can see that it doesn't let anywhere. Coming back out and exploring more we can see that he even went through the details of adding on little bunny ball stickers and guitar stickers to the lockers. This really shows the quality and the thought that went into this mod. Heading out over here you can see that the gate areas on the side of the stroller lockup have been removed. Anyway, moving on. We can come over here to see the big centerpiece of the lobby, the elevator. Now I did see a comment of somebody asking me if we can get in the elevator and push the button to do anything. So we'll go ahead and test that real quick. Getting inside the elevator we can press one button, 
which they do still retain their button pressing ability. But unfortunately they don't do anything. Flying back outside we can also check these two level 10 security doors. But again there's nothing behind them and it's just empty going that goes to nowhere. There is however a vent that leads into the kitchen but it's behind a wall so you'd never be able to see it under normal circumstances. Coming back out here we can go into the employee break room portion behind the ticket counter. And inside will find the stamina upgrade, and the message in the bag. Again back here not much has changed aside from some more stuff being added to the desk. Heading back out into the lobby, we can head up over here and see that not only has the sign been adjusted slightly, but they're also animated. Chica's earrings move and her eyes open and close. Freddy isn't animated in any way. Monty's eyes blink. And Roxy smiles and her eyes blink as well. Heading over to the area of which we entered at the start of the game. We can see that nothing has changed. The hallway is the same and so is the area preceding it. The final place we are going to visit is where we obtained our free complimentary entry pass. And our first save, again, nothing has chanced except some minor lighting things. Turning around we can see that the staff bot that is mopping the floors is still here, waiting to summon the chicken. Anyway that about does it for the RTX lobby mod by Fred Milk. Overall it's an excellent mod that I feel really restores the original look that came from the trailer. I appreciate your time for watching and as always, have a fascinating day. Bye bye.